Are you a retail or institutional investor interested in Bitcoin mining companies? The Miner Mag brings you free data and analysis from all major NASDAQ listed Bitcoin mining operations to know who stands out. Check out visualized metrics and data dependent stories at theminermag.com. Jason, welcome to the show. You got blown up on IG last week. And the only reason I saw is because of Joe Weisenthal over at Bloomberg. So shout out to Joe. If you listen to this, thank you for tweeting about it. Uh, I don't live on Instagram, but give us a little intro. And then we got to dive right into that subject. And of course, lots of things to talk about. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was, that was fun. It was surprising and, uh, and not surprising in a certain way. But, um, yeah, we, um, started we actually been sitting on this since early 2022 we um we did uh a little pilot just with two miners um and then uh just as a, like a little proof of proof of concept and then we uh we went ahead and just uh you know did enough uh we upscaled it so we had enough to um to support all of our pools and uh also make some domestic hot water and then we just kind of we just kind of sat on it and um tinkered around played with it um learned more about what we were doing and then we said, you know what, this would be a fun story. It's the summertime. It's a slow time in the spa industry. Let's have some fun. Um, let our fans see a little behind the scenes kind of thing. Uh, and, um, you know, it was interesting. We posted it and then um, almost immediately it got some like kind of like, you know, what is this? Like, I hate this. <laughs> some like some like not not really informed kind of negativity. And then and then all of a sudden, like all the Bitcoiners, uh, it must have spread around and all the all the Bitcoiners jumped in with um, a lot of knowledge um, and you could tell right away because it was like uh, informed on a different level. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I thought it was kind of fun. I thought it was like, you know, it was a fun discussion. Um, I think some people even got converted. You know, there was a, I saw if you go through some of the comment threads, there were some people who go, oh yeah, you know what? You have a good point. Um, so it, it was fun. I think some people maybe learned some stuff and, uh, you know, we, we were uh, getting a big kick out of it. I love it. Yeah, I want to go through everything, including like how you guys built this, as much as like your secrets you're willing to give away. For the the comments, there's some good ones in here. So I'm looking at it right now. And this is as of earlier in the week, I think like Wednesday, maybe. But my favorite one, I think, was this is so off putting. Just like so flatly anti yeah. Bitcoin mining. Don't want to have anything to do with it. And like, come on, like, not even interested a little bit that they're doing this. But yeah, when you guys started seeing these, like, what was your first reaction? Because like, I assume the people who follow you are normally customers, right? So you might even, like see these people on like a semi regular basis. Well, I mean, you know, so we so we knew that some people. Well, I I knew there was going to be um, some negative comments and, and a lot of positive comments. Um, you know, just from even me, like orange chilling my friends and family. I know a lot of people were like, "You're out of your mind." So I, 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 I knew that you know, um, not everybody sees it right away, and people have strong opinions. Uh, I know there's a lot of anti-Bitcoin propaganda, um, which yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I, you know, we were. I was kind of expecting that. Um, I was actually surprised. Like the one you read is basically what they all the negative ones were like. They were there wasn't any, you know, um, it wasn't it wasn't informed. It was just like negativity. It was kind of troll yeah. kind of stuff. So uh, it wasn't. I was like, I was expecting more like environmental questions or you know yeah. stuff like that. Um, really, that didn't really happen. It, it was just like I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> There's this other person who said, "Quote: This makes me like bathhouse less." Now I'm concerned about who is mining this cryptocurrency, which sensibly they should understand it's you who is profiting from it again you and whether yeah. I support that we're going to need some more transparency so like even in the comments I was like the questions you're asking like you kind of had answers to beforehand so maybe those weren't like actually people who are customers of yours yeah it was pretty pretty funny to see that yeah we're we're a very open book you know so we run the whole business that way we like to be transparent with everybody we're like we're mining and we bought the miners and now we're keeping the bitcoin <laughs> so yes yeah. <It's laughs> I don't know yeah yeah, so let's, let's rewind the clock a little bit and tell me about like the Bitcoin story for yourself. And then I really want to get into like the mining side of this thing. Uh, and I think a lot of listeners will. We've had like Coin Heated on and a few other people who've done like Bitcoin mining heated pools outside. But I haven't seen anybody who's been able to keep it like hot enough, long enough to keep it like going. So I'm really curious about that. But 
let's get the whole orange pill story first if we can. Yeah. So um, I'm fairly new to Bitcoin. I uh, I was very aware of Bitcoin since 2012. Um, I was working with a bunch of programmers who were um, Bitcoiners back then uh, in a different business I had. Yeah, before that, I, I had understood like kind of the fiat uh, scam, the fiat problems uh, for a long, long time since like high school. So I was, um, you know, somebody who would be very open minded about it. But uh, I, I just kind of never got around to it. If I had extra cash, I was really interested in like small scale commercial real estate that, you know, doing like vacation rentals. It was like the kind of uh, stuff that I liked to do, um, mostly because it was things that I personally were good at and have an impact in. So I wasn't looking I, that was like kind of my savings. And then, um, fast forward to 2020, you know, bathhouse, uh, had just opened in November of 19. We we're a young business four months later. It's like this whole lockdown thing. I was staying there. Like I, I didn't believe they were going to do something like that. And even people were saying they're going to be a lockdown. I was like, nah. So as soon as that happened, you know, because I took eighth grade economics, I knew, <laughs> I knew that, um, Okay, so the economy's gonna stop. People are gonna run out of money immediately. They're gonna print money. They're gonna give it to everybody. We're gonna have huge inflation. And it, it was at that point that I uh, really started to get concerned, and I started looking at Bitcoin really seriously. Um, you know, getting involved first by buying Bitcoin and learning how to self custody and, and doing the basics. And then um, as I went on that journey, learning more and more about it, the mining. Uh, you know, you really understand the power of Bitcoin and its resilience and it's uh, what makes it so special when you start to kind of get your head around mining. You're like, you're like, oh, oh wow, this is like, there's nothing else like this. And um, I wanted to um, to tinker with mining, with mining and also um, just like thinking about how much heat it makes and how, um, it, it, you know, what can you do with that? Because they're, it's, it's almost putting 100% of its energy out has as heat waste and when you're blowing it out you know have a fan it's disorganized it's just going everywhere it's hard to control it and so then i discovered that people were you know with bitcoin mining also other data centers applications are using immersion cooling and then you start going oh you can actually capture this heat and then i actually did find jonathan from coin he did a, a video of his backyard pool i saw i saw he set it up it's pretty interesting he's a tinkerer i'm a tinkerer we had we actually talked a little bit uh, so then it was, and then I, um, I started talking to, you know, engineers, uh, uh, we work with and, uh, we were like, okay, let's try it. Let's, let's try it. Let's, um, invest a little bit. Uh, the first, the easiest application is just straight up hot water, domestic hot water. It's like a no brainer pools are a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Um, but you know, the thing that like, that was obvious to me is because we have a huge, so, you know, you, in an engineering situation, you would have a base load and then you'd have like a peak load. So, um, like a hotel, for example, would have kind of a low base load, but they'd have these huge peaks where everybody wakes up in the morning to shower at the same time. Pools are, are a really great base load, which is perfect for something like this. So we did, we did an experiment and then, um, we said this is, this worked out great. Uh, it was actually set and forget it. It was easier than I, uh, than I thought. So then we said, let's run our, our, both of our pools, you know, full time on it. So we figured out, I figured out, I have a very simple system uh, and we set it up, see, this is about six months ago. And what I did, I just took the pool heaters in Watts. So each pool heater is 18,000 Watts. So I just said, you know, that's six, that's six miners each. Mm. So I had, I, I didn't even, I didn't even get into like BTU calyx and stuff till later. Yeah. So I just bought 12 miners, one for each pool. And uh, I hooked it up. Um, we, we run a loop. We, uh, we use tanks. Uh, they're full of dielectric fluid, like any immersion cooling thing. Um, the ones we went through, uh, we, we used, uh, are these DCX tanks. I like them because they have a pump and a mm -hmm. heat exchanger right on the tank. So it's, it, it's integrated right there. So that, so the, the, the oil, the hot oil gets pumped out and it, and it just goes straight to a heat exchanger right on the tank and right back in. It's very clean. So then we're, we're just running from there. So the oil never really leaves the tank. We're not pumping oil throughout the whole bathhouse. From there, we run, we have a uh, hot water. We have we have a cold water coming into that heat exchanger, and we have a hot water out. And then I'm I'm piping hot water from those the heat exchangers on those tanks downstairs to another heat exchanger on each pool. At each pool, I put an aquastat, which is just like a thermostat but for water. There's an aquastat reading the the temperature in the uh, in that's circulating through the pool pump. 
And then if it's below temp, uh, our desired temp, we can set it like a thermostat. If it's below that, it opens the valve, allowing the hot water to go through the heat exchanger. If it's at or above the temperature desired for the pool, it closes the valve. This is off the shelf. It, it, we bought high quality stuff. It's like Honeywell. Yeah. It's not like anything really um, extravagant. It's very simple. It's fully automated. We can keep it within a two to three degree range at all times. And they run in uh, they run in parallel. So each pool. And then after the after the pools, we go to a uh, uh, an indirect hot water heater, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. It's basically, no, yeah. it, looks, it, it looks like a regular hot water heater, except there's no heating element. Okay. There, there's not electric heat, heating element. There's not a gas burner. It's like a tank, like a storage tank, like a giant thermos. And around the inside wall of the thermos, let's just say it's a copper pipe. And, that, and it has the hot water going through the copper pipe and then back out. So these liquids are obviously never touching. It's a heat exchanger. And, it's, and then it has cold domestic water comes in. It's heating it up. So it's like a, it's like a storage tank. So then, and then we feed that into our domestic hot water system just to get the, every last drop out. And then, it, and then, it, and then it, and that's, so that's like kind of made it's, it's stops on the train and then it returns back to where the mining tanks are and hooks up to those, um, those heat exchangers on the tanks with cold water and it just circulates through. And that's what it is. So there's actually like, there's three loops. There's a loop on the tank. There's a loop that goes around to the pools. And then there's a loop from the heat exchanger of the pool to the pool itself. And that loop is the pool's own plumbing with, um, you know, what it was there anyway. And, um, and that's it. So it just transfers the energy. And if it does, if the pool doesn't need it, closes the valve with an aquastat, done. And we just run it. And then um, what I did on the other side is I, I use brains. I'm on brains pool. And then I, um, uh, when I took their um, their their software, their firmware, and lit on the miners and just set it to auto tune, if there's if we're mining too much and the pools are like we're good and there's nowhere to send that energy, the the temperature of the tank rises, and then brain software goes, oh these chips are getting hot, and it underclocks them. And oh wow, yeah. yeah. So I didn't I didn't need to do anything. We we ended up uh, I ended up making a much more sophisticated controller that we're about to install so I can get it really dialed. But um, just the brains out of the box, you know, auto tuning software works perfectly. That's amazing. Have you talked yeah. to their team about it at all? No, I went to uh, I went to a uh, at PubKey in New York. I went to a um, a talk that they were at, and it was um with one of the marketing guys. And then I had to I ended up having to rob before we got to the uh, kind of the meet and greet afterwards. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean we're you know we're very small scale, so we're we're like twelve to three hundred terahash, like nothing big here. So that was a uh, that's where we are. That's where we are now. And then we're building a much bigger location that we're almost done with in uh, in Manhattan. That's a much much more sophisticated system. Has a lot more energy needs. And we're um, we're we're going to be putting in. So this so this system in here. In, in, I'm in Brooklyn right now. Here in Brooklyn, okay. this system is a separate system than the rest of the HVAC and everything. Over over there, it's all one big system. So it gets the, this loop that I was talking about. It's a lot of different heat inputs. Actually, it gets like um, it dumps heat from our dehumidification system and all these different stuff. And then the miners are contributing also to that. So we're making like a really state of the art system, and we're we're going to be experimenting with using um, the hydros, the domain hydros, as opposed to doing immersion, cleaner, easier. But we'll I want to see how they perform. So it's going to be it's going to be fun. We'll be there'll be more to be revealed. Interesting. Okay, I have a lot of questions. One, yeah, just say like, how hot do you keep your pools normally, and what is like the, the heat loss that you're sort of noticing from the miner and the oil coming out all the way to the pool? Like, has it been negligible, or like, are you trying to like increase the heat of these pools often? Yeah. So the pools, um, they they pretty much there are times when they'll uh, when they'll close the valves, but they're they almost run constantly. We have, so we have one pool that's a hot pool. It's 104 degrees. It's not huge though. This is like, think about a pool. It's like 10 feet by seven feet. Um, so we keep it at 104. That one will, it will drop uh, a few degrees, you know, with bather load. If it gets like full of people for a long period of time, and people are splashing in and out and we're topping off, but that's kind of normal. That would happen with um, a regular heater. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, the, um, the other pool is a neutral temperature, which I keep at skin temp, which is a, usually around 94, 96. So that pool never loses temperature, the um, the neutral pool. And I think it's actually because 
it has much more volume. I think it has much more to do with the pools themselves than it does with the miners. Here's gotcha. what the down here's what the downside is. The the downside yeah. is um is when you drain a pool. So we, we have a we have a drain a pool because uh, you know for chemistry reasons like once or twice a week we have a huge amount of, of people here so to, to keep the chemistry where we want it which is perfect we have we have the at night so like at midnight everybody leaves and then re immediately drain the pool and then you're refilling it with you know ground temperature so 55 degrees 50, uh, to 60 degree um you know uh basically tap tap water temp uh water and then yeah. it starts running and then it starts running through our chemistry and loop and the heat exchanger there is a higher, <clears throat> there's a longer, there's a longer uh, time to get to temp, slightly longer time to get to 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 yeah. the to the yeah. temperature, than he would with like just like throwing a, an insane amount of electricity at it. Um, uh, however, once we get to temperature, it, now we're talking like it takes us like seven hours instead of five, okay. which is not an issue. Yeah. Um. So so um, in the mining tanks. You know, I actually want there to be, I'm looking for Delta. Mm -hmm. So, and the way I control that is with pump speed. So there, there, there's a lot of things I can actually tinker with, you know, to yeah. get different outcomes. So I can, obviously, um, I can underclock or overclock the machines. And also I can control the pump speed of how fast the water is circulating in the, the different loops. So um, <clears throat> those are kind of like the, the easiest levers to pull. And there's other ones. I, I want to have a big delta because I want to send pretty hot water to the heat exchangers because every heat exchanger, whether in this application or any application, you're going to have a few degrees of loss, right? So I actually want um, to get the tanks up to like one, 120 or, or, or 140. Um, but if I, if I ran the pump really fast, they would actually never get above 110. You know what I'm saying? So I actually set it up so that they kind of get hot. Which is maybe not the best thing for the lifespan of the uh, of the miners, um, and I I have con control over that, just through what I was saying before, like you know, I can tinker with the pump speed, yeah, I can uh, I can underclock, I can overclock. When you were putting this all together, how long did it sort of take for you to like think about like I need to put this part here, and then tell me a little bit about the Brooklyn place that you guys have. Is there like space for this? Because I just I just imagine everyone in Brooklyn's living on top of each other, like maybe <laughs> how like. <laughs> like eastern part of brooklyn but like how did you find space for this and like the parts necessary like are you like a doodle on a whiteboard kind of guy or how'd you come up with it yeah I, uh so me and my um me and my engineer got um the concept like in like a, a schematic figured out together his name's Raphael. he's great and you know, he's the engineer that we would he's like he's like our mechanical engineer that we would use for air conditioning and that kind of stuff and then uh, it was a line drawing and then my plumber he's a real tinkerer and he found ways to make it, you know, um, simpler. We could do it with less parts, you know, we could do it with less money like this way. Um, and, and now that we know now I can even make it simpler. I think I could even cut out like a whole, a whole potentially cut out a whole loop from it and stuff. Um, there's a lot of things that we could do to, imp to improve things. But, uh, I mean, basically we knew that we needed, we, ne we knew that we needed to get, um, from the heat exchanger of the tanks to heat exchanger in the pool. So that part was kind of obvious. A lot of questions were like, you know, should, the, should they be in parallel? Should they be in serial? Like, should we use this or that? Or how, how are we going to be able to control this? Like, and then what's going to happen if these things happen? Um, but uh, it's it's actually a pretty simple uh, concept and it could, it could work. It could work for so many applications. I, like the killer application for this would be like a, uh, like a huge apartment building or a huge, like a, like I was saying, a huge hotel. Who yeah. needed? Who needed like just uh, a lot of load, and then it could be like supplemental, or it could be you know you could do the whole load, and it, it would. And then also you know they would have the um, the scale to make the the up cups uh, the uh, you know the upfront cost the initial cost worth it. But yeah, it's uh it's uh it's it's pretty cool, and it, it definitely it definitely works, and it actually it's 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 a, a set it and forget it scenario. Yeah. Like, once once you get your system set up, you know off the part shelf, off, off the shelf parts, it runs, it works. Um, I check it on it every day, mostly because I, I love those little machines and I want to see the, <laughs> yeah, what I want to. I just you know, um, but I don't really need to. You know, I leave for the yeah. weekend, I come back on Monday, they're just, eh, just yeah. turning. I love that. That's so cool. Um, two questions for you. One, did your team or anyone you're working with? 
think you're crazy for this. Oh, they all yeah. all of them did. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what did you have to do to like convince them of this? Like, um, well, yeah, I didn't have to, I didn't have to convince anybody, but definitely yeah. they were like, oh god, he's talking about miners again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, now that now that people see it, I think they actually got really interested in it. But it was kind of like need to see it to believe it kind of mm-hmm. thing, because it. it was, Listen, most of my team, we, I have a lot of great, uh, really smart people who work here. Uh, they're hospitality professionals. You know, some of them are Bitcoiners, some of them aren't. None of them really understood mining. They're just like, what even are you talking about? You know, <laughs> it, it's like, it's the most important part of Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. um, but but once, they, once they see it, like, every, you know, they love they'll, they'll to take people back there and show their friends. We have it, we had, to, we had to make room for these. These tanks are like, you know, they're yeah. like, they're like three foot cubes kind of, um, okay. they sit on the floor and we were like, where are we going to do it? We needed to also to have it where we could drill holes. Cause so it's in the back of my office. There's a wine storage room <laughs> for the, uh, for the restaurant. And so we're like moving all the wine racks out of the way. They're just sitting right there. Yeah. Next to, uh, next to our whole like beverage storage stuff. And there's just pipes running everywhere. But, um, uh, and, and we were just drilling holes through the floor to get into the pump room. And uh, and they just they just sit there, you know. There wasn't a moment when you're drilling holes in your floor that you weren't convinced that this was a crazy idea that wasn't going to work. I I I, I definitely I definitely had those moments. <laughs> I, I was just like, it works on paper. It works on paper. Why is nobody else doing this? You know. Uh, or I I kind of was like I was worried that it was going to be like a constant headache. Yeah, you know, a constant headache. But, uh, you know, then I just was always thinking like, you know, we're going to, we hopefully God willing, we're going to build a lot of bathhouses, uh, a yeah. bigger, a bigger scale. And I think this could be, you know, could become a big part of what we do, uh, as we want, we want to be efficient. I mean, look, what do we really do? We buy energy, turn into heat for our customers to enjoy it. Um, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a big input, uh, for us. So if we can do that in a way that's that's um, really efficient, um, uh, then it makes a lot of sense. It especially makes a lot of sense, you know. So so this this here in Williamsburg, it's it's a uh, oh the owner wants to do this. It's a you know like that crazy guy kind of project. Um, try it out, and it, it's uh, it was redundant because. I already had pull heaters. Like, yeah, I yeah. I already I already um set this place up to I I already plumbed it. I already put in the pool pumps. I already I already put bought all that stuff. And then when I decided to do this, I'm doing a retrofit, so I'm I'm paying for that infrastructure twice. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, now now that we know we know, and we also know how we can even be better at this. Uh, and there's a lot of ways we can be better at it. Um, yeah. you know, uh. We c- will we'll build our systems to uh, be ready to receive this from the beginning, and we and we know we've proven to ourselves that it works, and we can commit to that. And yeah. I don't need to buy I don't need to buy another pool heater. I'm never buying another pool heater. <laughs> yeah. And so and, and when we we design it, when we design as we're designing, you know, like I was saying, I, I just built one in Manhattan, and we knew we were going to buy it there, and we knew mm-hmm. it was going to work. And so it, it didn't even cost anything more, you know. Especially yeah. with, my, miners are very affordable right now. So yeah, um, it's like thanks bear market. <laughs> I got some really affordable wires, and you know it, it wasn't really significantly more than it would have cost to do it anyway if you mm-hmm. did it right the first time. You know, and then there's like there's so many there's so many uh, little things that like uh, we could do to to um, to make it more efficient over time. Tell me uh, about like the the energy costs in Williamsburg, and then for the miner, and then for like the pool exchange that. You- pool heater that you had previously because with miners it's like it's simple right it's like dollars per tear ash or whatever that's a cost of the machine and jewels per tear ash for the machine itself and then we'll get hash price and basically offset your energy cost that way but like how does it compare against like the previous machinery you were using um so you know so you would never want to mine uh, you would be shocked at what we pay for electricity like is it, it, is it over 20 cents it is with it, i think it so it's it's over twenty cents when you factor in all the uh, stuff because they also they 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 break the bill up in a really deceiving way. There's like oh there's a delivery fee, 
yeah, and all, and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's over twenty cents. You would never just want to mine here. You would just yeah. You'd be better off buying Bitcoin, you know, on an exchange or something, um, or or you know, investing in mining somewhere else. But uh, if you're already buying electricity, at, if you have to buy electricity at twenty cents, and what you're doing with that is eating a pool, then it makes a lot of sense because you're buy, you're going to buy that power no matter what. Um, so that was kind of our reasoning. Um, and then we went we uh, we went in, we went into it. You know, I what I did is I did I data logged. I, I data logged the the um the pool heaters that we already had, which are monsters. And I was looking at what they do, and they actually they're um they're they're actually, they're very inefficient because they don't run at a steady state. They actually like crank full blast as with as much power as they can, and then they go off. And then they you know, so so um which is not an effi- yeah, it is weird. I was actually kind of surprised by that. Um the only time that they're steady, they're you know they're like they're like pulsing kind of. Uh, mm-hmm. Even when even when we're refilling a pool, they from from scratch, we expect them just to yeah. be on till it's hot. They're not doing that, and they're they're very uh, they're very inefficient. So um, we started running it and looking at our bills, and it was so close mm-hmm. that it was hard to say that's even what it was. Like it, it went up by like a few hundred bucks. So we we have like a here. This one's ten thousand square feet. Um, and we're expanding it next door to be uh, bigger now. We're in the middle of construction here too, but yeah. it's like you know we have an eighteen thousand dollar electricity bill. It, gave, it moved a few hundred dollars, which yeah. on a month to month basis, yeah. You know, if we're open, if yeah. the month is thirty one days instead of thirty, it's going to be that much different, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's like okay, I think our bill went up a little bit, but we actually were very happy with the amount. Our bill went up um, less than the amount than the value of the Bitcoin mine. I'll tell you that. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> so we we were very happy with it. We were very happy with it. Um, we spent a lot of money to, to do the retrofit, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like you know, it's materials, it's plumbing, it's it's pumps and pieces, and and um, so and buying the tanks and buying the equipment. So, um, you know, that was like we spent some capital on that. Uh, yeah, which is like we're gonna recoup that over not over a month but over years. Uh, like I was saying, as we go forward. We had to buy some equipment to do this one way or another, and so it becomes like marginally more or something yeah. to um, to do this. And then I also believe believe in it. I think I'm doing something good for the world, so it's a it's a win win. Um, yeah, but it, our our power our power bill, it, it you know it was within a margin of error that didn't matter. Yeah, are you gonna hodl it or are you gonna hold like sell it as it comes in and like? Kind of that rough. Rough. treasure, tre- yeah. We're gonna treasury it, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's like let's just sit on it. I-, I might like open a bunch of lightning channels with it and tinker yeah. around with that. You know what I mean? And like use it yeah. for liquidity or something. But um, yeah, our our plan we don't we don't like need to sell it, you know, to um to fund the power costs or anything like that. It's not like we like we're not operating on a margin like that. You know, we're you know we're he- we're a healthy normal business with what we do on a day to day basis. Like you know people yeah. um we. People pay to pay. We sell admissions and we do um, services for people. Yeah. So that's that's our core focus. Um, that's what I spend like most of my day doing. And um, yeah, we don't need to sell our Bitcoin. We're not. <laughs> that would be very painful. <laughs> that would be very pain. <laughs> that would be very painful for my cold dead hands. So um, so, so yeah, our plan is just like keep mining, keep treasuring. Yeah. It, you know, try to be better as we grow. You gotta get a sponsorship from one of the mining pools out there. Be like, you can have this pool, and then they can put like their logo on the bottom. Any uh, ideas for other people out there? Things that you want to tinker with that people should pay attention to for this heat exchange idea? I mean, I, this popped off for good reason, right? Like, no one expected a bathhouse in Brooklyn or Manhattan to be doing it. But like, yeah, anything else that you're like kind of thinking of? Yeah, I mean, I've seen I like so I've seen people doing um, like heat their house with it. They typically they're doing it, they're just like blowing the heat out of the miner and then trying to keep the noise controlled, which I think is like the wrong way to do it. You know, there's, um, so I, I do water to water heat exchangers, but you could do water to air, almost like I think of a radiator in your car. You know, so I think you still want to immerse in mine. So I, I think there's like really interesting applications for home heating that could be done really better. Cause also you have so much more control when you're doing it with water. Um, I also would love to see somebody actually try to do a distributed mining company that 
really gets into buildings big like you know I, I would target like big manhattan buildings or um big hotels stuff like that and really see like could we could we really do this and try to do efficiency i mean I, like it would be fun to get in a room with somebody for with an engineer be a, a entrepreneur for a month and just do a hackathon of like there how could we get really efficient and good at uh producing um like hot water with these miners or you know, heat in a different way there's um i don't know if you've ever looked at the uh, thermal batteries and that technology that's come out no not at all it's they're they're here now i mean people have been talking about it for a long time um but like sunamp is a british company and they have an office in new york they make what is essentially a battery for heat right so that, that you know it, yeah so if you, if you take what we're doing and you mix it and you buy some of those and they're not expensive yeah to then you're um let's say that you're not making enough to do peak at any one moment but you're storing like so let's say at night everybody's asleep and nobody's using hot water or heat or whatever and then you're storing all of that in thermal batteries in the morning when everybody turns on hot water at the same time it dumps that's totally possible there's there's so many there's just like so many uh really cool things we could do and i think that uh even people who weren't bitcoiners but were real estate people would would be very interested yeah uh, they, i think there's a cool company there uh for for somebody that's really like uh where i think this this probably goes you know s slowly over time you know um energy sector and mining mining and like um maybe the uh architecture sector and mining start merging a little bit yeah. makes a lot of, it makes a lot of sense or even like you know if you're using something else you don't have to heat everything with it you know could it be um if you're using heat pumps for example which are super super efficient um you could be using you could be using mining for um you know uh you could use like a heat pump for your base load and then you could be using mine for peak or vice versa so there's, there's there's just like so many applications i think it's fun i hope other people do it if anybody wants to talk to me about it i'm happy to talk with them yeah where can people find you like to follow up on the conversation probably best i'm not on social media besides the bathhouse account which i don't even manage so um just email me jason at abathhouse.com but I also, how'd you find out about uh, like coin heaters or anybody if you're not on social media? That's interesting. Oh, I never saw any of his social media. I was, um, when I, when I started wanting to do this, I was yeah. looking, I was going through, um, uh, YouTube videos searching like hot water, Bitcoin mine. You know, I was like, I was just searching around in there and then I found, uh, I found, I found one of his videos and he was, he had, he had a different kind of, yeah, he was approaching a different way, but I saw what he was doing. And it made sense. And then I reached out to him. We had a, uh, he's a fun guy. We had, we had a lot of fun conversations. I was hoping that I was trying to get him out here, but the, the timing didn't work out. There's, I saw a bunch of other people doing stuff that was like interesting. You know, I, I, uh, I think it's hard with the air cooled. It's, it's very, uh, it's chaos. It's chaos. <laughs> it is chaotic. Yeah. I run a, uh, an air cooled home line and it's, it's had its bad days, a lot of bad days. <laughs> so it's, it's hard to keep it going keep it up yeah behind. so like, the immersion sounds a lot better it was very clean it's very yeah. it's very clean you know and it's very easy to plug it into um you know domestic hot water or whatever or even if you just want to if you have cheap power and you just want to dump it you, you could literally could get like a chevy radiator yeah you know with a fan on it and yeah you know, something like like 300 bucks at the parts store yeah we had one person on our podcast two years ago talking about that uh did the same thing if i'm like a ford mustang radiator and then just did a bunch of pvc pipe up to like a like a box basically like a clear plastic box where he had his liquid in so it was like very wonky looking i don't think it survived very long but like it was working <laughs> yeah yeah it works yeah i mean that is a heat exchanger basically you know it's got water going through it and it blows it has a fan that blows air through it and that's it well jason thank you so much for your time yeah. today uh, i appreciate pleasure. it and yeah for the audience definitely reach out to him yeah, come to Bathhouse, jump in the hot pool, no tea by Bitcoin. You'll appreciate that. Come say hi. Perfect. Thanks, All right, for the good work. Thanks so much. Bye.